Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where I'm working with you step by step through each of the ABRSM theory grades. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you visit SharonBill.com, you can find access to some free PDF information sheets. They're available in US letter or A4 and they'll accompany each step of this series. There's also a page which links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can access information about the books that I have available. If it is that you're working to actually take this exam, I've written a book, How to Take Your ABRSM Music Theory Exam, and it's full of tips and techniques on how to best prepare for your exam, and also how to best make use of the time when you're actually sitting in the exam room taking the exam paper. So if you go to SharonBill.com, it's all there. If you can give me a like, that would be great, and subscribe to my channel. Although this is now the end of this series, this is the last one, so well done for getting this far. There's still loads more to come, so do subscribe and keep updated. So let's press on, and we're turning to the back of your book now, to page 40. And we're on exercise four, the last of the general exercises. And as I've said before, I do suggest that you make full use of this as a revision exercise and do look up exactly everything that you need to to help you to get fully conversant with all of the information. It draws, draws on information from grades one, grade two and grade three. And so I'm going to give you pointers to where to look to find the information to answer these questions if you can't just do so off the top of your head. And then um, I suggest that you press pause, try these on your own. It doesn't matter if you make mistakes, you're only ever writing in pencil, you've got your eraser to hand. And it's always better to learn by your mistakes. So let's crack on. So this first question is asking what key we're in and you'll find how to work that out if you look at grade three, section F. The time signature that you need to look for to add here is grade three, section E. We've got to describe whether it's compound, simple and all of those aspects and you'll find that also in grade three, section E. The intervals that are asked for you to describe, you'll find that um, in grade three, section J, let me think a moment. These you will find in grades one, section Q, your performance directions. The degree of the scale is first explained in grade one, section N, but then you need to reapply that knowledge to this later information. Where is the music loudest? You'll find those performance terms which will show you that in grade one, section Q. Um, the slurs that you're looking for are first mentioned in grade one, section N. Let me think now, what do they mean? So you can explain that. You've just got to look ahead and find that. Um, what do these slurs have in common? So we can just look at that. That's just a glance and a look. I'm just trying to think what's going on here. And then this last one is first met when we're converting from two, four, from the time signature that you've chosen, that will be found in grade three, section E. Okie dokie, I think that's it then. So I'll leave you to it and then when you've had a go, take your time, look up what you need to and then come back into the video and we'll work through this together. So I'm hoping that you've had a go on your own, so let's check through these together now. What is the key? So we've no key signature here to help. Well, there's no sharps or flats here. However, we have this one clue here of a G sharp. And we can only really explain that raised note as a raised seventh. So if G sharp is the seventh, the eighth is A, meaning we're in A minor. And A minor shares a key signature of nothing with C major, and so that makes sense. And so we're in A minor. 
add the time signature where required. So the time signature would go here. And we need to figure out, first of all, what our bottom note is. So we need to look, are we counting in groups of two or groups of three? And here we can see we're in groups of three, really. One, two, three. And so if we try to put this in crotchet beats or quarter notes, it's not going to be properly grouped. It wouldn't fit in minim beats or half notes. Our bottom note has to be number eight. Don't use this bit or this bit because they are in complete bars as anacrusis and not a completed exercise. Find an easy bar. So let's just look at this bar here. One, two, three, four, five, six quaver beats or six eighth notes. So that gives us that. So bearing in mind that we've got this right, we can now answer this. And it's in compound time because it's grouped in threes. And there are two groups of three and six, eight. If you remember, six, eight is duple time because it's two groups of three. And so that's that. OK, so we've got some intervals to look at now. So look at interval one, first of all, and then we've got two here. So our lowest note is A, and we've got a one, three, four, a fourth, and that's a perfect interval. So there's no more thinking there. That's a perfect fourth. Then our next one is a one, two, three, a third. Now A to C natural is part of the minor scale. If it was part of the major scale, there'd need to be a C sharp, so that's a minor third. So there we go. Okay, give the meaning of these terms next. Andante, we first came across in grade one, and it's at a steady walking pace. P is short for piano, which means quietly or softly, you could say. Give the degree of the scale of the first note. So we need to know that we're in the key of A minor, and then degrees of the scale is first discussed in grade one N. So if A is our first, A, B, C, D, E is our fifth, and so it's the fifth. Where is the music loudest? So we need to just look at what's going on with the dynamic range. We're starting off quiet, it grows here, and then it starts to fade away. So in actual fact, it's still growing here. So here, the music is loudest at bar end of bar two, beginning of bar three. So end of bar two, so it's kind of the last beat, well I don't suppose we need to be quiet, and, and the beginning of bar three. You could name the beats of the bar if you wanted, but I think that will suffice. There are two long slurs of, over the notes from the beginning of bar four, so it's from the beginning to bar four, excuse me, and then the second half from the last part of bar four all the way to the end. So what do they mean? So those slurs mean to play legato or in a smooth, connected manner. I think that explains it fully. I think the main word they're after is legato there but you can always elaborate. What do the two sections of the melody marked by these two slurs have in common? At a guess, just at a quick glance, I'm saying that the rhythms are the same. Let's see. Quaver crotchet, quaver crotchet, quaver dotted crotchet, crotchet quaver, crotchet quaver, crotchet quaver, dotted crotchet, yeah. You can, sometimes you can kind of guess what's coming before you've even looked. So, um, um, they have the same rhythm. Will suffice.
there we go and then this last one starting at the asterisk in bar four so from here to the end it's a bit tricky it's over the bar line I like I prefer it when we can just keep it aligned we've got to rewrite the music in two four so what we're doing we're going from duple compound which is two dotted crotchets two duple simple which is plain crotchets which divides into groups of two and so we've got to shrink down and we do that by removing the dot and adding a triplet and so they've started us off which is very generous of them so we've got B A. So we've got to here. So we start. They've kind of given us to here. We've got to go from here to here, and following the, the pattern that they've generally generously given us. So let's just see what we've got left to do. I'll finish this bar. So we, there's no dots to help us. And so what we have to do is add a triplet so that's that bar so we've got one two and a bit bars left to go so let's get to there so this bottom E did have a dot we'll remove that dot and then for this group of three we'll have to add a triplet Here we'll have to add a triplet. I'll keep the stems as they've done. Would well, do you know I'm going to turn that stem up and then we can put the triplet a bit more easily. I think I'll take a bit of a liberty there. Can go either way, so I'll choose to do it that way. So following the pattern they've given us. And then the last note we remove the dot and now we're in groups of two not groups of three there we go then that's completed not only that exercise but this book as well we've completed all of grade three so well done for getting this far however this isn't the end of the journey for you if it is that you're thinking of taking the exam then please do do lots more revision before you contemplate actually sitting the exam. Work through lots and lots of previous exam papers. They're readily available. And um, continue to keep practicing and working on that just so you get the best possible crack at your exam. And please do have a go at um, looking at how to take your ABRSM music theory exam book that I've written. There's loads in there to help you. Just completing this book is only the first part of the journey. If you go to SharonBill.com, there's lots there to help you, so do make use of that. Thanks for watching. Give me a like and subscribe. There's loads more to come, so stay updated, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.